I'm going to do a quick review of function syntax and some of the other things we've seen with functions. We know that a basic function starts with the func keyword and then a function name and then anything we want in the body of the function goes in between the curly braces here. Some other formats you may see are like this one that takes one integer parameter and you can see it's type int indicated here. In this last example we see takes multiple parameters. We have one integer parameter and then a second integer parameter. As we've mentioned and you've probably noticed, you've been using functions since the Maze app. Here are two examples of the print function and you notice here on the right side we can see what's being printed out or you can click these bubbles to blow it out into the middle of the playground. Next let's see an example of defining our own function say hello. This function takes no parameters and it prints out hello. Nothing too complex here. Let's take this one step forward and look at a function that takes a parameter. If we scroll down a little bit we'll see this is the function say hello to student and all this boilerplate code up here at the top is to create a student struct and initialize some student struct instances. And then in the body of the function we've taken this student parameter and we're printing out its name. And since it's called multiple times if we click this little white circle here to blow it out we see the very last printout but if you click value history we can see all three of the printouts because of these function calls here. In this next example we have the same student struct and we have a new function called greet student and it takes multiple parameters. It takes one student parameter and then a boolean parameter called late for class. To call this function we write the function name greet student followed by our student struct instance in this case Gabrielle and then we need the external parameter name which for this boolean value is late for class and then a boolean value in this case false. And here we see the output of the three function calls. Let's move on to naming parameters. I really want to focus on this section. The code here at the top is the same as before. We define a student struct and then we create some student struct instances. But the function definition is where things really get interesting. For the student parameter we specified both an external name and an internal name. And then the late for class by default uses the same internal and external name late for class. So we can see here at the bottom for all three of these function calls we're using the external names for both parameters. And remember by default the very first parameter normally doesn't use an external parameter name unless you explicitly specify one. Now I want to show you something that took me a really long time to understand when I was looking at Apple's documentation. And you're going to be doing this more and more. We haven't started to talk about classes yet, but classes can have functions known as methods that are associated with them. This is the UI view controller class and let's pick one of its methods. I'm going to search for view will disappear. And if we click view will disappear it'll blow out all the extra information about this particular method. So we can look at its swift definition here at the top. Notice how the function takes one parameter, animated, and for an external name it uses an underscore. When you see this in Apple's documentation it means that the default external parameter name should be used. And remember, since this is the first parameter, the default external name for it is nothing. It just is omitted because it's the first parameter. And notice the view will disappear does not use any external parameter name. And that's the default behavior for the first parameter. And that's it.